Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. So the wheat harvest has begun now, Bernard, and we're really uh, quite pleased, actually, with how it's turning out. It's not a record crop the way that we would like it to be, but gosh, given everything the wheat crop has gone through in terms of it was dry through April and May, tremendously dry. Even in June, it was dry in many areas, quite high temperatures at times as well. So we ended up with a really short crop, and that's a straw issue that we maybe cover in a second, but from a yield perspective, uh, Essex County has started. It's kind of intriguing. I, I really rather enjoy it. Uh, the poor fields are yielding 65 to 70 bushels per acre. 10 years ago, 65 to 70 bushels would have been a great crop. Now all these guys, you ought to hear them whine about 65 to 70 bushels, quite hilarious. And it's not good enough, it's not what we want, but if the poorest fields are 65 to 70, the best fields are actually up now at 110 bushels per acre. There's not many crossing that 100 bushel line, but we are crossing it. Uh, it won't be a record year because a record would take 120 bushels uh, as, as the upper end or even 130 bushels. But man, when you put it all together, it looks like we're going to have a good solid wheat crop. Most of the yields we're hearing are 85 to 90 bushels per acre. And, and that's pretty awesome when you consider everything the crop went through. The other really awesome thing about this wheat crop is the quality is outstanding. 66 pound per bushel test weight. Uh, that's actually where some of the yield is coming from. It's not that we have that many more kernels there, but because they are just weighing up so heavy, uh, kind of like little lead bullets. And at 66 pounds per bushel, that really gives us an additional 10% in yield because normally wheat is 60 pounds per bushel. And so 66, that gives us 10% more yield. So that's kind of an awesome story. Almost no fusarium, which is a good news as well. And uh, the only little niggling thing in the, in the quality standpoint is actually on the protein side of things. On our soft wheats, we don't care so much about protein quantity. We're, we're okay all the time. But on our hard red winter wheats, we'd normally expect on a dry grain fill period that we would have high test weight as we're getting and high protein. Uh, the protein has actually been a little bit iffy on the hard reds. Don't quite understand why. Maybe that'll change as we get into harvest. But in general terms, the quality is absolutely outstanding. From a straw perspective, uh, lots of demand for straw and there will be more growers that sell this straw than normal uh, this year just because it's so high priced. The, the lowest end seems to be three cents a pound, quite a bit in that three to four cent a pound range, but even some growers paying five and six cents a pound for straw, uh, when you put that together, you kind of say, okay, uh, if I got five cents a pound and I have to bale it, I have to load it, I have to move it, uh, I have to store it for a while, you put that all together and it's absolutely worth at least 10 cents a pound if not more depending on how long I have to store it at 10 cents a pound you do the math on that that's $220 a ton for straw it's not that long ago that you couldn't get $220 a ton for grain corn or even for wheat grain for that matter now we're selling our straw for that that much money it's it's really quite intriguing how that market has developed uh, over the years the other thing, of course, that a lot of growers are really keen on is double crop soybeans. It's interesting, uh, you know, it's the, the 5th of July today. Virtually every acre of, so of wheat that has been harvested in Essex County has been replanted into soybeans within a day or two and actually gotten some rain down in that part of the, the province these last couple of days. Those beans are going to get off to a great start. There's some really good yield potential there. If you plant on the on the 1st of July, you kind of have a 30 bushel yield potential. You give up about a bushel per acre per day. So on the 5th of July, we'd say, oh, you're sort of 25 bushels per acre. We've had growers do much better than that, but it depends a lot on the year and just how much rain we get through August and whether or not we have an open fall. So I think you have to keep your your objectives or, or your uh, expectations kind of pulled back to a reasonable level. And so that's kind of 25 bushels at this point in time, but still uh, excellent conditions for, for trying that out. Uh, we're really not in a zone that that should work very often, but right now you'd say, why wouldn't you give it at $14 soybeans? Why would, why would you not go out there and just give it for all you're worth? Uh, of course, the other thing that a lot of growers are talking about, the hay crop has been very poor in the province this year. Uh, first cut hay, very dismal, a lot of winter kill. Uh, some growers as little as one third of a normal crop. A lot of people in that, uh, you know, half to two thirds of a crop. The best guys were getting three quarters of a crop. 
and second cut wasn't that outstanding it's just kind of been average if you move out of the deep southwest uh, you get into the Niagara Peninsula you get up through Gray and Bruce County still very dry through there second crop or third crop hay is going to be very short unless we get some moisture very quickly so now lots of growers talking about growing a forage crop a feed crop after the wheat crop comes off so again uh, the wheat crops early and there's some good options out there that oat pea mix is probably one that a lot of growers are, are looking at to try and and grow some forage to fill that gap that's in their system right now